Hello, hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna be doing the Summerween book tag. Because if you didn't know, Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte and myself both host a readathon every summer now called Summerween, which is basically like celebrating Halloween in the summertime. We read a bunch of horrors and a bunch of thrillers, and it's just a fun, spooky time. And the lovely Colleen over from Little Ghost Creations reached out to Olivia and I recently, and she asked if it was okay if she could create a Summerween book tag in anticipation of the upcoming readathon. And we were like, hell yeah, that sounds so cool, and it sounds like so much fun. So Colleen came up with a bunch of these different questions and we're just gonna answer these questions and have a fun time doing this Summerween book tag. And if you didn't know about Summerween, it's taking place in July next month. It's going from July 2nd through the 8th. I know I said in my announcement video that it was going through the 9th, but it's actually through the 8th because if it's July 2nd through the 8th, it'll be going from Friday until the next Thursday night. I mean, if you want to do the extra Friday, like who even cares, you know, like do one extra day of Summerween. I also wanted to show you, look what came in the mail today. If you didn't know, these are going to be the Summerween book sleeves that our friend Rachel over at Happy Go Lovely Sleeves, she made these book sleeves for us for like Summerween book sleeves. And these are going to be going on pre-order sale on June 18th through the 20th so that you can get them if you want to have them during Summerween. But they finally just came in the mail today and I'm so excited about them. Like I think this one's my favorite because it's pink and it has bats on it and it just looks really cool. But I also really adore these two. This one's like really like Halloween Summerween kind of colors. And then this one's like skeletons and it has like what looks like little flowers on it. And then there's pink on the inside, like, they're just so cute. And she's also selling these book corners that are kind of like bookmarks. Like, you just put the page in that you're reading on in there. And these are also so cute as well. So if you want any of these during the actual week of Summerween, you can pre-order them June 18th to June 20th. And yeah, I'm just really excited about them. And I'm so grateful to Rachel for wanting to collaborate with us and work with us like this. It's just so much fun. But anyways, let's get on to the questions. All right, so question number one says, what spooky reads are you most excited about in your TBR list and your pile right now? Well, some spooky reads that I'm really looking forward to that I don't have in my hands at the moment yet because they're not out yet is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I mean, Riley Sager is like my favorite author. And so I'm just very, very excited for his new release. It's coming out very soon, like in a few weeks. I got that pre-order, so hopefully it'll come on the day that it comes out. But I'm also really excited for The Last House on Needless Street. This is one that's coming out in the US. It's coming out in like late September in the US. So I'm thinking it'll be the perfect October book troop selection, yes. But yeah, I'm so excited for this one. I know it's already out in the UK. I think it came out in like March because I thought it was coming out in the US in March and it's not. So I think it'll be perfect though for October time. Like it's gonna be the perfect October book. So very much looking forward to that. But some of the books that are actually on my physical TBR that I'm still really excited about. Um, one of them is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This one actually goes on sale at the end of August, but I got an ARC copy from my local bookstore and I'm just so excited for this. I feel like I might save it though for like around Halloween time just cause it gives me that perfect vibe. And I also have The Night Sister by Jennifer McMahon. This is one that I'm very tempted to read during Summerween just because I love Jennifer McMahon so much now. I also have Tender is the Flesh that I'm really excited about still, The Butterfly Garden, which I've had so many people recommend me this book, so maybe I should read this one during Summerween. And also Violet by Scott Thomas because this is the same author as Kill Creek, which ended up being like in my top five favorite books of last year. So I feel like I really wanna read more of his backlist titles which would be this one here. The second question says, what's your favorite revenge novel? And I actually had to think about this one for quite some time because usually revenge is not one of my favorite things to read about. And I usually actually don't like reading about revenge that much. Like it's just, it just doesn't interest me as much as other things in thrillers and horrors and things. But Colleen actually said, they never learn for this, uh, ch for this prompt. And I was like, yes, that would definitely be my favorite book that revolves around revenge because in this book we have a female serial killer who kills men who are sexually assaulting women or harming women in some way and this book was just 
everything. Like, this book is so freaking good. If you haven't read They Never Learn, like, honestly, what are you even doing? Like, this is the book you should be reading for Summer Halloween. Honestly, oh my god, so good. The third question says, what's a horror or thriller slash crime book you wish you could experience for the first time again? This is such an interesting question, and I feel like I'm gonna be so basic, but Gone Girl, I really wish I could experience this book again for the first time because I read this book in very early 2014, and this was the book that I credit to getting me into reading in the first place because after I read this book, I became obsessed. And this was the first like real thriller, like, or at least like popular thriller that I had ever read. And I just, I have reread this book since, but I really do wish I could read it again for the first time and see if I would love it as much if I didn't have this previous connection and love for it. Because I do think this book is stunning and I do think it's still one of the best written thrillers of all time, but I know I'm kind of biased because I've already loved this book because it got me into reading, you know? The fourth question says, sucks to suck, you were just given a handful of your least favorite candy. What candy is it and what spooky book did you want to love that disappointed you? Well, for my least favorite candy, it would probably be the purple grape Skittles. Blech. I mean, I like Skittles. I only eat the red ones though. And the purple ones, like anything grape flavored, ugh, I cannot. It's disgusting. I refuse. Um, But one book that I thought that I would love and I ended up really not liking it is Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. I bought this bitch at full price at the bookstore the day it came out and I'm full of regrets because I spent like $28 on this book and then I ended up really, really not liking it. Dare I say, I nearly hated it. It was so disappointing and I'm still sad about that. I'm honestly still so salty. <laughs> Question number five says, time to put on your costume. If you could exist in one spooky novel, which one would it be and who would your best friend be? Okay, see, this one's hard because there's not a single book that comes to mind that's like a spooky book that I'm like, I wish I was there because I'm actually a little bitch in real life. Like, <laughs> I like reading horror in books, but anything in real life, like, I can't even go to like, like I used to live in California, Knott's Berry Farm and Disneyland and all of these amusement parks do these really cool like scary Halloween events and all of my friends would want to go. I would never go because I'm a little bitch. I get so terrified in public. If there's like an actual like maze or if there's like a corn maze and it's meant to be like fun and you go in there and you get scared, like I will fucking shit my pants. Like I do not do that shit in real life. So I can tell you a couple books that I would absolutely not want to be in the world of. And that would be The Troop because hell no, you would not catch me on this island. Another one would be It by Stephen King. Like this is absolutely not happening. If I ever saw Pennywise in real life, like I can just end it all right there, honestly. Like that's terrifying. And same with like The Shining. Like the idea of being in this fucking creepy ass haunted hotel. Like, no thank you. Number six says, what is your favorite haunted house book and or television show? I mean, as much as I do love The Shining and the whole like haunted hotel vibes, I've got to say Kill Creek is definitely my favorite haunted house story that I've ever read. And I just think this is one of the most like unique and one of the most cool premises of a book that I've ever read because it's like four authors staying the night in like the most haunted house in America. It's just so much fun. But I also, I mean, I haven't read the book yet but The Haunting of Hill House is probably my favorite like spooky haunted house show. I just think The Haunting of Hill House show was so well done. The casting was perfect and it had the perfect amount of like making you give a shit and care about the characters and then also making you absolutely terrified. Number seven is the food question. It says you can only pick one from each category would you rather a says chocolate or sour candy which this would be easy chocolate <laughs> because i'm not a huge fan of sour candy like i mean i like sour gummy worms and every now and then and stuff like that but for the most part chocolate like i have such a sweet tooth anything chocolate give it to me b says coffee or tea which coffee i don't even drink tea and then the last one c says apple or pumpkin pie and I would say pumpkin pie like nothing against apple pie but pumpkin pie <laughs> anything pumpkin get into my body. Number eight says, show us your favorite book with a witch or a woman who gets screwed over by society and the patriarchy. I literally have been thinking about this question for like over a day now and I don't think I have an answer for this because I don't, I just realized I don't really read a lot of books that deal with witches even though I do think it's something that I probably would enjoy but I just don't. So if you have any book recommendations for books that involve witches, I do have this book behind me, The Year of the Witching. That one's on my TBR. 
So maybe that could be an answer for this, but again, I don't really know. Next question number nine says, which book on your shelves or audiobook library has the scariest book cover? And this one was also hard because I don't feel like I have a lot of books that actually look scary from the covers of them. Like most of my books don't look super scary, but from all of the books that I've read, I looked through my horror Goodreads shelf and I remembered the book Sour Candy and I find this cover to be so genuinely creepy. Like, I don't know what it is about like the fucking antlers coming out of the head of a human, but that shit just really scares me. Like that imagery really scares me. Question number 10 says, it's Summerween and it's hot outside. What books do you recommend that give off summer vibes? Think lakes, cabins, beaches, whatever reminds you of summer. And this is a really fun question. I actually just did an entire like summer reading recommendation kind of video where I did talk about some of these books but I think The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager is like one of the most summery thrillers that I've ever read because it takes place at like a summer camp and it's like major lake cabin campy vibes it's so fun I also think um The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb this is a thriller that takes place in Texas and this book just gives me the most summer vibes. Like I think it would be a really fun book to read in the summer. I would also say um, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, as well as the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I don't know why Grady Hendrix just feels like he has the perfect kind of horror books to read in the summertime. And I read both of these in the summer last year, I think, and I really, really enjoyed reading them. I actually read this one last year for Summerween, and this was the perfect book to read for Summerween. Oh my gosh. 80s vibes and it's like teenage girls and it just says this book packs all the magic of a summer horror flick and it really does. Question number 11 says you and your friends are exploring a well-known haunted house. <laughs> You wouldn't catch me doing that, but you get separated and suddenly you hear screams coming from somewhere upstairs. You run into the next room and find two of your friends. Which two fictional characters are they and who do you want in this situation with you? <sighs> Hey, you know, as I said, um, you would not catch me looking through a haunted house. If I heard screams, I would get the f out of there, okay? I would get out of there. Like, who would I want with me? Like, I don't know. The only thing that comes to mind for me for this is, like, the kids from It. Because, like, they seem like they know what they're doing, you know? They seem like they can defeat Pennywise, so, like, I would want them. Question number 12 says, Trick or treat. Stephen King, H.P. Lovecraft, Mary Shelley, and Shirley Jackson are at your front door. Who do you give the best and biggest candy bar to? See, this is when I show how new to horror I am because I've only read Stephen King out of these, and I don't even think these are all authors. I mean, I know Shirley Jackson wrote The Hunting of Hill House, which I have not yet read, so I guess I would say Stephen King, even though I don't necessarily think or know if Stephen King is, like, the best writer out of these people, but I've- I haven't read the other ones yet, so... Ooh. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I've only really been actively reading horror for, like, about a year, like a little over a year. I mean, fuck, I'm wearing my Pet Cemetery shirt. And then number 13 says, what is your favorite spooky book to movie adaptation where both of them are actually good? Here I go whipping out it again, but I seriously think it is one of my favorite book to movie adaptations in like the horror genre because I think the movies are actually better. Well, not both of the newer ones. I didn't really care for it part two with the adults, but the it part one with the kids, that was such a fun movie. And I feel like that movie is a lot more fun than reading this thousand page book. I also would agree that The Shining, I prefer the movie personally to the book. I know that's probably an unpopular opinion because I know Stephen King fans really fucking love The Shining, which like I enjoyed this book. I thought it was pretty good but the movie is everything and I think that's because I personally saw the movie and loved the movie before I ever read the book like I was a huge fan of this movie for years before I ended up reading the book so I feel like that's probably why I personally have that preference I mean as I said earlier I have not read The Haunting of Hill House yet so I mean that could potentially be one of my favorite like book to movie adaptations but I just haven't read the book yet <laughs> right well that was the summer ween book tag I think this was such a fun book tag and thank you so much to Colleen for putting these questions together and for wanting to create this for summer ween and I'm so excited to participate in summer ween next month I'm still thinking about like my TBR and all the things that I've been wanting to read I've been having a lot of people recommend the book to me, The Elementals by Michael McDowell. I think it was recommended to me as something either paranormal or something that has like black and orange on the cover. So I did end up ordering this book and I do think I'm going to read it during Summerween. So I have heard you loud and clear that you want me to read that book. So I am very excited. I think I will read that book during Summerween. And as far as anything else on my TBR, like I don't really know yet. I think I'm getting the new Grady Hendrix 
in the mail, like the last final girl support group, like that book. And so I think I'm probably gonna be reading that during Summerween as well. And I don't really know, like if you have any recommendations of anything else you would like to see me read during Summerween, then obviously drop them down below because I love some recommendations of different books to check out. And please don't forget to, if you want to pre-order any of these beautiful book sleeves during Summerween, then these all go on pre-order sale starting June 18th, which should be the day that this video goes up so you can check it out. And I'll leave Rachel's link to her Etsy shop in the description so you can go and click on it and check it out. And you can use the code SUMMERWEEN to get 20% off your book sleeve. I forgot to mention that, that's pretty cool. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you are participating in Summerween, let me know what are you planning on reading. Thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you very soon with another video, bye. What are we fighting for? I can't tell